Every week there seems to be something new around generative artificial intelligence like ChatGPT. The thing is, when it comes to managing investments, the banking industry has been developing these tools for years. So how is AI helping already with automation and advanced technologies and financial services? And importantly, what is to come? Join us for that conversation right now on UBS Trending. Hi, everyone, and welcome to UBS Trending. I'm your host, Anthony Pastore. Bernie Akong, co-CIO of O'Connor MultiStrategy, is with us today to add some flavor to this ever-trending and ever-changing AI discussion. Bernie, good to have you here. Very happy to be here. ChatGPT is all the talk, all the rage. Artificial intelligence, it seems to be the thing that everybody's talking about. So I have a question for you. Give me one word in your brain that you use to describe AI right now. One word, I'd probably go for transformational. I think that's, a, I, I, I think that's what, something that I would absolutely agree with. So let's expand on that a little bit, being that it's transformational. Paint a picture of where AI is going right now. So I think if we liken it to, you talked about the things that we do already and we've been using it for a number of years, but to show how it's transformational and what I think you know, will be our business and day-to-day -day tasks going forward, let me give you a couple. Yeah. So the first is uh, I might be asked to do a written interview on the topic of AI or some other topics. And in the future, I think my virtual AI self could train itself on documents, emails, presentations I've made, meetings that I've been in, and essentially generate those answers in an intelligent fashion for me to then do a final edit and review. Or maybe something which I think will happen already next year. Let's say you join a Teams meeting half an hour late. Uh, you'll be immediately given a uh, option to have a summary of what's taking place in the meeting. And then say in the meeting you get asked, hey, Bernie, tell us about this. It's a question you weren't prepped for. In a few seconds, you could probably pull together stuff from PowerPoint, documents, emails again, and say, this is a quick you know, summary of what you asked me for. And at the end of the meeting, uh, again, click a button, and it gives you action points for the whole group. Um, so just making everyone more efficient in what they do. Yeah, yeah, efficiency is a great word. Uh, augmenting my already busy day or making it easier for me to function you know, in a, in a nine hour day that we all put in or more depending on which business yeah, you're in, um, to help out with everyday tasks that just require more administrative type of work. That I think to me is a, is a win right there by itself. So when you think about generative AI, like a chat GPT for example, what do you think are the benefits? I mean, you highlighted some right there in your examples, but really I think people were, are questioning what the risks are because certainly there are some that are out there. Yeah, look, there definitely are. So if we talk about um, the risks first, um, so I would say the two you know, big ones at the moment, front and center, feel like legal liability mm -hmm. and then linked to that regulation. And I'd say what's also interesting about those two is that it feels like there's going to be different interpretations by geography. Mm. And we're seeing that already. Um, so interestingly, like Japan uh, actually has come, come out and said there's not going to be any copyright law. So if you're in Japan and you suddenly have AI music, you know, copying you know, Taylor Swift, Drake, whatever, in theory, you won't have that legal liability, which sounds crazy, obviously, when you put it in that context. It certainly but that's does. that's already, you know, the sort of stuff it's Probably crazy for the artists to think about it yeah. that way as well. Yeah. What about the benefits? I mean, clearly the benefits are helping our lifestyles. Yeah. Maybe work, making work easier for some. Yeah, so I think you touched upon one, which is obviously making work easier, um, you know, saving time. There's definitely a lot of stuff which we can automate, which is you know, low value, very repetitive. I think there's other things, though. I mean, um, product innovation, I think, is an interesting one for consumers. So uh, with the data that um, consumer companies have, they'll be to offer more innovative products, think new features, um, new things that maybe we don't even know as consumers that we actually really want. Um, I think another thing will be downtime. So sometimes we get frustrated in our daily lives about you know, downtime of things around the house. Mm -hmm. Companies get frustrated about downtime at the factories. Well, you'll have predictive maintenance, uh, intelligent ways of being a, essentially foresee when you're going to have issues and, and fix those before they even come to you know, fruition. 
Um, so those are a few of the yeah, benefits, I think. Yeah, yeah. I mean, cost reductions are a part of that as well. You know, businesses yep. could save money, maybe fewer. I have a friend who's a, a lawyer, and he has actually been able to reduce his human workforce because, you know, AI has helped him with his business. So there are certainly benefits there. And obviously, though, there are humans that need to manage the AI as well. So it's not like jobs are going away. They're yes. just being used differently. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, no, I so this, what the interesting question here, I think, also to add on to this in our world, in the world of investing and financial services, as I said, We've been using this, and especially on the asset management side where you sit, for a long time now. Um, is it a disruption, or is the model something that you think is sustainable in the way that you've been using it? So we have been using AI, I would say, in some form, or particularly things when you think about machine learning. I think what's really changing and potentially disruptive, I would think about it as it's the leveraging of intelligence. So we've been using things which help us you know, be more efficient, automate our tasks, but just imagine you're tapping into something which is effectively replicating your, your intelligence. That's right. what's really different, and that could be disruptive. To be clear, I think it's gonna take a while, even for our industry, to really move up the curve to the next level because regulation is an important thing. Um, you know, and a lot of large corporations, they don't necessarily want to have to take the risk about you know, what's the liability be around copyright, is our data internally going to be shared you know, with external organizations. So it's going to take time. But I think, yeah, the disruption for many industries is coming. Um, and I think particularly industries who haven't invested in the tech or data stack um, are particularly vulnerable. And look at the performance of tech, particularly in mm -hmm. the S&P 500. The, the top seven names even have a nickname now, the surging yeah. seven, because they essentially, all seven of them have a, a lifted the average while the other 493 names in the S&P 500 are trailing significantly. So tech has been such a huge winner and an outperformer in yeah. the last two years or so or more. Yeah, no, it's, it's definitely you know, fascinating times. I think what's interesting when you talk about tech is, yes, we all know that you've had these large cap you know, winners. Uh, we think there's really interesting opportunities like beneath them. There's been so much focus of these you know, big companies, which, yeah, some of them will be winners, but there's also a lot of other companies you know, underneath that and smaller market cap, which we think also will be able to leverage um, you know, some of the benefits from generative AI. Um, you know, for example, Companies which uh, will benefit from the explosion of data, mm -hmm. data centers, uh, IT consultancies, which can help um, some of the firms uh, navigate you know, the, the roadmap as they implement you know, general AI. So yeah, lots of opportunities besides just the large cap technology. Right, and obviously on the, on, the, on the other side of the flip side of that, companies that where that AI generative technology can be replaced or replace what they do, obviously there's some, some potential losers in the mix as well. Yeah, there are, and I think um, first off, there's in, in tech and media, there's some companies where their content, their products essentially can be easily replicated by generative AI. There's also a number of companies where they uh, focus on small and mid-sized you know, businesses where those businesses probably are gonna be, find it a little bit harder to invest in AI than maybe some of their larger peers. Um, there's also some, for example, software companies that are very dependent on seat growth and maybe in some industries, you know, that seat growth is gonna be more challenged going forward as, as companies you know, put through efficiencies. Mm -hmm. So yeah, definitely winners and losers um, in the tech space. Right, so given that we do have the winners and losers, as we wrap our conversation today, Bernie, how can investors out there be taking advantage of the AI space today? So um, first thing I would say is think you know, long-term mm -hmm. and not just focus on the short-term. Uh, Roy Amara talked about um, with technology, we tend to overestimate the benefits of uh, technology in the short term and underestimate them in the long term, and, and we really agree with that. So really think about you know, what are going to be the multi-year uh, ramifications of this. I think the second thing is there's going to be winners and losers, so be, think about diversification, think about ways you can benefit not just investing in a product which is just about appreciation, but actually about you know, finding companies which could be disrupted and could generate you know, a lot of alpha on the downside. And then finally, I think you know, it is a complex uh, situation when you're trying to analyze it, how a corporate's gonna respond, how the business model's gonna change. I think being uh, with, in areas where there's sector uh, expertise um, and following companies you know, really rigorously quarter to quarter and see how their financials change, that's gonna make a big difference. Right, and working with experienced teams like yourselves and O'Connor and our financial advisors here at UBS, certainly that's a, that's a big help. They have all the information that an investor would need to make those right decisions for their own portfolio. Bernie, thank you so much. Great conversation, good to have you here. Pleasure, thank you very Bernie much. Bernie Akong from O'Connor. And for more information, everybody, please visit our website at ubs.com 
forward slash views. That's our insights page. Plus, you can follow UBS on social media, particularly our Instagram channel at UBS Trending, where you can find UBS Studios content that you won't be able to find anywhere else. And as always, if you have questions, we recommend that you speak with a financial advisor. Until next time, I'm Anthony Pastore. We hope you have a great rest of your day and remember to keep your eyes on what's trending. See you soon, everybody.